Well, please welcome this week's special guest, Paul. <laughs> welcome, Paul. So, first off, Ronnie, what is Paul to you? This is Paul. Um, Paul, I found one morning, <laughs> bound and gagged in a bunker on the golf course next to our house. <laughs> <laughs> David, would you tell us how you know Paul? Uh, this is my driver, Paul, <laughs> and he refuses... <laughs> he refuses to drink pints because his hands are so small. <laughs> and, uh, finally, Sarah, your relationship with Paul? Uh, this is my news agent, Paul, and he once asked me to uh, watch the shop for ten minutes, and by the time he came back, I'd broken a window and there was a little boy who had his head stuck in a crisp box. <laughs> There we are. Ronnie's gagged golfer, David's small-handed driver, or Sarah's unfortunate newsagent. Lee, where would you like to start? Ronnie. Yes. This bunker. Yes. Well, what were you doing? This is early in the morning. Very right? early in the morning, because I go out very early in the morning, about maybe quarter past seven, twenty past seven. On the golf course? On the golf course. In case uh, anyone wants to use you as a tea. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> It is upsetting. It is upsetting. <laughs> Mind you, I shouldn't worry, because the other day I walked out with my big golfing flat hat and the greenkeeper rushed out and says, these bloody mushrooms are early this year. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you, so you saw him on the... You saw him, uh, to be truthful, the two dogs, they went into the bunker, I thought, well, they're sniffing about that. And I went over there, and there, what Paul was, bound and gagged, uh, in, the bunk, in the sand, in the bunker. <laughs> Uh, and, and then what happened? Well, then I, I, you were, he was coming round, because I think he had had a bit of a night the night before, so I, t t I tapped him on the cheeks gently like that, and when I was tapping the cheeks and I'd done, done the string, you think, and, your, and string around your ankles, you were really relieved, came round, didn't you? And I took you back home to uh, Anne for a cup of tea, a cup of a bit of toast, and the dogs were very pleased to have found him. He'd been there all night. What was this? Was this some sort of prank? I mean, was it a stag do or something? Well, I didn't want to be too nosy about it. I wanted look after him, get her on the phone to his friend, right. have him collected and off the bloody premises. <laughs> Has he kept in touch? Um, we have, really, haven't we? Because um, we found that your uh, wife was quite friendly with uh, one of my daughters, I think. I remember we, we've kept... We haven't seen enough of each other, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who else would you like to question? OK, um, David. Yes, when you say he's a, a dry, he's your driver, I mean, he's, he's picked you up on occasions. He, he, was, he was the driver on uh, uh, several series of peep shows. So he works, you're a professional chauffeur, are you? He's not allowed to answer, he's, he's, a, he's a professional Naughty driver. driver. Yes. Have you ever picked me up? He's not allowed to answer. <laughs> Are we allowed to see your hands? Yeah, you can hold your hands out. Oh, you could hold a pint of lager. What nonsense. What's wrong with those? I've got tiny hands. Have you? Yeah, probably smaller You're than You're my his. kind of lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> da David, tell us about the, the whole business with the pints, then. What, well, what Paul told me is that he always chooses to drink bottled beer because when he holds a pint, his Wait, can I, this isn't at the wheel, is it? This is... <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no, but on a night out, he chooses to drink bottled beer rather than pints because he gets laughed at when for holding uh, a pint glass because he sort of has to use two hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is <laughs> Are you sure they're not serving it in, in buckets? Maybe there's some course you could go on to make your hands bigger. <laughs> should speak to Ronnie about that. Yes. Um, now, what about Sarah, Lee? Um, OK, so, how old were you? Uh, I was old, it was only a couple of months ago. Are you a regular in his shop? Yeah, I buy a lot of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what, ha what happened while you were in charge? Um, well, uh, you know, I was trying to shut one of the windows because it was quite cold and that you had, like, quite high ceilings. You know those sticks that have got the hook on the end that you can shut a window and it sort of went through the window? What, what's the shop called? Paul's. It's called Paul's, Paul's. is it? Yeah. Paul's. <laughs> Just Paul's? Yeah. Not Paul's shop. No, no. It's well, Paul's. it's obviously a shop. <laughs> to be fair, Mark's a sketch. <laughs> What about this boy who got his head oh, stuck yeah, I forgot about in him. a box of crisps? 
Well, How did at, that come about? It was at the end of the school time, sort of four o'clock, and uh, there was a rush of little kids, and uh, one of them just wanted to get himself some crisps out the box, and it was the last one, and he got his head stuck in because he sort of went in. The cardboard boxes with all the crisps yeah, in, yeah, in the, the hole. hole? Yeah, yeah, he couldn't quite reach, so he went he put in his head, head in, first. And, and, he, and it was stuck? Yeah. <laughs> and you couldn't think of any way to unstick him? Well, I don't really do, kids. Um... <laughs> The crisp box thing doesn't ring true. They're not that big, are they? You have to put your head in. If it's a little boy, you know, it's not, he hasn't got a head, no offence, uh, the size of yours. <laughs> yeah, his arms are of reasonable length. Presumably. Yeah, that's a good point. We need, we need, we need a guess uh, from you, Lee. Is Paul uh, Ronnie's bunker buddy, David's tiny-handed driver, <laughs> or Sarah's unfortunate news agent? He does look like a driver. Can I have a look at the back of your head? Back of his head. Head. Yeah. Do you recognise the back of his head, Julian? He's <laughs> <laughs> a driver. I mean, he's a driver. But I don't believe he's a northern shopkeeper because his shirt is too nicely ironed. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the dilemma now. The dilemma is. You're saying it's definitely, you're saying there's no chance of it being wrong. It's unlikely, right. but I'm not saying it's definite, right? I want that to be true more than any other story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> because that's what I want to see Ronnie doing in the big chair next time. Uh, you're, yeah. you're not going to believe it. <laughs> I can't do the voice. All oh, right, I can't oh. do the voice. And if I could, I wouldn't keep doing it. But... <laughs> but... Oh. Ronnie, can you do an impression of Rob? Uh, no, no. I've, I've, never, <laughs> I've never felt the need to do an impression of Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you want the glasses? I love the glasses, <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we are. How about it? There we are. Oh, my word. Goodness me. <laughs> And in a packed programme tonight. <laughs> Good Lord, you get vertigo in those. Oh, God. <laughs> Nobody without these. You know? God. <laughs> so, what are you going to go for? I don't know. What do you think? I think it's the driver. You think it's David's driver? Mm. Holly? Yeah, I think it's David's driver. I think it might be Sarah, because right. she looks like the kind of person that could break a window and almost kill a small boy in ten minutes. <laughs> team and say it's Sarah. Oh, bold. OK, <laughs> you're saying that it's feeling. Sarah and the and news agent. Sarah. OK. Paul, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Paul. I'm David's driver. <laughs> and I don't think <laughs> time's got the answer at all. <laughs> yes, well, if ever there was a, a harsher warning of the dangers of a fascist state, I'd like to see it. <laughs>